as always, all we can do moving forward after a loss is see what went wrong, try to work on what went wrong, and move on to the next game. Obviously, the next game being KC isn't the easiest slash the funnest to do. I kind of wish we played um, the Panthers next or the Commanders or the Giants, but... You know, you play your schedule, and that's pretty much how this goes. So, according to Next Gen Stats, we're going to look at Joe Burrow's completion. Well, his completions, incompletions, and so on and so on. Now, I want to bring this up because I keep getting the comment about this, and I do want to go ahead and just make sure everybody understands. This is coming in here from Jesse Morse, MD. He is a medical doctor, healthness, uh, health and wellness, sports and family medicine. Like he's, he knows what he's talking about, and he just kind of reiterates stuff that the announcers were saying, but also stuff that he, you know, personally knows. Seen flexing his wrist on the bench. That's Joe Burrow, of course. Put a glove, then took it off again. Announcer said he was, he still has stiffness and swelling in the wrist regularly, which obviously is inflammation we've been talking about. All of this is expected in his uh, surgically repaired right wrist, and he underwent surgery to repair his ligament in 2023. So, for a lot of people, are, are, whenever I say he has inflammation in his wrist, I keep getting the comments, oh no he doesn't, he doesn't, he's fine, he's not hurt. It's not that he's hurt. Inflammation does not mean he's hurt. It just means he has swelling, stiffness, and it's uncomfortable for him to throw the ball in certain scenarios. So imagine him normally being able to throw the ball all over the field perfectly, right? Now when he throws the ball, he's going to have stiffness in his wrist. He's not going to be able to flick it like he normally is. He's going to have some setbacks and to be mad uncomfortable when he throws the football. Um, now, shout out to Jake for posting this. But according to Next Gen Stats, he was pressured at the third lowest rate of his entire career. Normally, you see this and you're like, oh, that's, well, that's crazy. So, was he pressured at all yesterday? And then you realize the fact that majority of Joe Burrow's career, he's had one of the worst offensive lines known to man. His rookie year, probably the worst. And after his rookie year, it hasn't been really that much better. So it's kind of funny because when you look at this in a vacuum, it's like, oh, so he wasn't pressured much. And then you realize, oh, no, he was. It's just the fact that his line has sucked throughout his whole entire career. So yesterday being the third lowest rate, isn't really a bad thing. Like, isn't crazy insane, but it's just funny when you look at it and you don't know. If you don't know the context of the fact that his line has had sucked, you might think that this is insane, but it's really not. Anyway, though, so let's talk about this. So, completion. He's Yesterday, he only had a total of, what, three completions that were 10-plus yards. And, again, you know... The greens are the completions, by the way. The whites are the incompletions. It's very clear that yesterday, especially with his, um, you know, inflammation and his swelling and, you know, first time throwing the ball in an actual game, didn't play any in preseason because Zach Taylor doesn't like to win, apparently. Um, with all that being said, I think it's very clear that Zach made the game plan yesterday a very short, simple, and sweet check down game plan. Because everything we see here, all these passes, these are just check down passes. I mean, five yards, four yards, um, everything behind, I mean, literally every single thing from this line back is, is less than five, five or less yards, uh, every single thing. And I mean, pff, that's insane. That's absolutely insane. And then of course, going down the field here, we did target. This actually was the passing interference to Yoshi. You know, this one or this one was the, I think this one was the PI to Yoshi here, uh, which obviously was overthrown. Wasn't really catchable, but he did take a shot down the field. And it's just, this is a problem. It really is. And when you can't throw the ball, you can't run the ball. When you can't run the ball, you can't throw the ball. And it's just the uh, problems and issues will continue. And now, 
the thing is, right, we already talked about it yesterday. Zach Taylor calling offensive plays is a problem, right? And yes, to a certain degree, the stiffness and inflammation in Joe Burrow's wrist is also a problem. Now, that will get better and more manageable over time. So I'm not really too scared or upset about the inflammation as much. Uh, that's something that he'll just have to deal with and learn to deal with. But we're not going to change anything when it comes to Zach Taylor calling plays. You know, because the first, the first part of getting better is acknowledging there's a problem. And I don't think he's ever going to acknowledge that he's the problem of calling plays. So, well, what can we do? Well, first off, we get T. Higgins back next week. And that's an absolute W. Um, we also get back, well, Jamar Chase is going to be healthier. No more. No more food poisoning. He'll be in a better state than he was this week. So that's, again, another very positive note in all this. Um, it sucks. It really does. But at the end of the day, you have to put this past us. And I think, I mean, I would love to see Joe call more plays and Joe call some of these plays and not be Zach Taylor calling them. But we're just going to have to deal with what it is what it is. We have the third easiest schedule in the NFL, right? And obviously, today's game was a humbling game. Today's game really showed that, you know, it was what we would call a up, uh, not an upset game. It was an upset game, but it was a trap game. This was absolutely a trap game. So we just have to keep it rocky, keep it rolling, and focus on, you know, one game at a time. KC is going to be a very tough game. And starting off this season, I mean, if we go through our schedule real fast, now with knowing how today went, um, it's very possible we lose KC game. Okay, it's very possible we go 0 and 2. We'll probably beat the Commanders. I think we can, even with our problems. That's one and two. We'll probably beat the Panthers two and two. It's very possible we lose to the Ratbirds, but I think we'll beat the Ratbirds. In Cincinnati, I think we will because at that time, so going based on history and, of course, every week, Joe getting better with the inflammation, plus getting back Chris Jenkins, getting back McKinley Jackson in this Ravens game. Um, it being in Cincinnati also helps a little bit. I think uh, for the most part, we should be okay it's going to be a tough game, but I think we can win that game. And I'm looking worst case scenario right here. So what? So 0 and 2, 1 and 2, 2 and 2, let's say 3 and 2, 4 and 2. Very possibly lose this game versus the Brownies. But again, by that time we're we'll be in mid-season form. Once we get to mid-season form and we're not early in the season, I think we're going to be absolutely fine. We just have to kind of keep trucking that through but we're gonna be we're, we're, we need to take advantage of some of these easy wins uh but i think we will i really do think we will i think we'll be fine i mean yes it sucks to solve the season like this but we always do we always saw off the season like this we just need to get back going and keep it rocking for the rest of the year so tell me down below your thoughts and opinions who day